If you've gone shopping for screws at Home Depot or Lowe's, chances are they came from Henry Chen's factory. We have been producing this screw for about approximately 10 years out of our China operation. But now these screws are made in Taiwan. American demand for goods from the island, whether it's hardware, toys, or furniture, has grown a lot in recent years. Taiwan also controls more than 90% of the world's supply of the most advanced chips, which end up in almost everything from electronics to cars. In 2021, these exports to the U.S. hit a record $72 billion, up about 70% since 2017. This boom in trade between the U.S. and Taiwan comes as both governments have also strengthened their military relationship. And this closeness has angered Beijing. Taiwan is Companies can get caught in the middle of different governments uh, competing with each other for power and influence. So we visited this factory to see how geopolitical tensions have made operating a business in Taiwan trickier. So these screws, these are typically used on top of roofing, uh, roofing screws. Henry Chen oversees operations at J.C. Grand, one of the leading Taiwanese manufacturers of construction fasteners since the late 1970s. Back then, Taiwan was one of the world's biggest manufacturing hubs alongside Japan and South Korea. In the 1980s, China started opening up its economy to the world, including Taiwan, which has been separately governed since 1949 when the Nationalist Party fled the mainland after being defeated by communist forces. So in hope of reunification, Beijing welcomed Taiwanese companies to the mainland, helping to cool tensions and make China the world's factory that it is today. In China, there's lower commodity and labor cost. Uh, the cost of China versus Taiwan for us, uh, just purely on the production level, it was about 5 to 10 percent cheaper. JC Grand expanded to China in 2001, and eventually close to half of its products were made there. But that started to change at the height of the U.S.-China trade war. The United States has just announced tariffs on another $200 billion in Chinese-made goods. With the tariff, it made our China operation so much harder. In 2018, the Trump administration imposed a hefty 25 percent levy on many Chinese products like Chen's screws. He said it was one of the first times he realized how U.S.-China tensions could have an immediate financial impact on the business. So the company had to make a decision stay in China and raise prices or move somewhere else. Taiwan has the benefit of just having so much know-how that's been kept here for the past 40 years. So it was, it was primarily a Taiwan-China decision for us. This is one of the examples of the items that we shift the production from China to Taiwan. Since the tariffs were first introduced, Chen's company isn't the only one that has returned some production back home. Taipei has convinced more than 250 companies to relocate by offering financial incentives and resources. And this surge in manufacturing capacity has helped U.S. trade with the island boom. Taiwan Shortly after taking office, President Biden sent a delegation to meet with the Taiwanese leader, who's been actively seeking a free trade deal similar to ones the U.S. has with Canada and Mexico. And the relationship isn't just about commerce, but also security. For instance, the U.S. has sent special forces troops and Marines to Taiwan to train soldiers. So are you China, saying that, that the United States would come to Taiwan's defense if yes, China we, attacked? Yes, we have a commitment. Commitments like this, though later hedged by the White House, have been met with protests from Beijing, which has told the U.S. to stop interfering. Beijing has also sent warnings to Taipei by conducting military drills about 100 miles from its shores while sending spy planes and bombers near the island. So as Taiwan builds stronger ties with the U.S., it's been moving away from China, and this dynamic could pull each of them into a conflict. The Taiwan issue has uh, been a, a challenge for a long time. Scott Kennedy is with the bipartisan foreign policy think tank the Center for Strategic and International Studies. He's been watching U.S.-China relations for over 30 years. In the last several years, Chinese policy has grown even more antagonistic. There's been concern about whether or not China may be preparing to use force and has given up uh, on its goal of peacefully resolving 
the political questions with Taiwan. While security experts say the chances of a war are low, any missteps by the U.S., China, or Taiwan could leave companies that operate on the island or the mainland in a vulnerable position. The more assertive China has become, it's a challenge for every company to try and thread that needle. For J.C. Grin, threading the needle means running factories in China and Taiwan with a wait-and-see approach. We see our China operation as being very steady for the time being. Um, but there's prob there probably won't be too many opportunities to make major investments, partially because of the uncertainties with the U.S.-China relations. The company is also weighing whether to shift more production to Taiwan. But that decision comes with other challenges given the small island's increasing focus on manufacturing chips. Labor cost is going to be an issue going forward. And that's largely going to be due to uh, investment in high-tech sectors here. That could eventually drive up the labor cost. But Chen says dealing with that issue is far more predictable than figuring out what the world's superpowers decide to do with Taiwan. From our perspective, we really would like to see steady policies. No major policy changes, not for China, not for the U.S., and not for Taiwan. But I mean, I think there only, there's only so much that we can do about that.